I met this girl when I was 10 years old. And what I loved most, she had so much so. Hey everybody, it's Old School Heart back with a new video for you guys. Actually a new series for the month of March, which coincidentally coincides with Women's History Month. So if you are new to this channel, the first thing that I ask is that you hit that like button. After you hit the like button, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, after you subscribe to the channel, go ahead and hit that share button. Now this is for everybody across the board. Sharing these videos will be vital to our community. So please, if you could share this video to all social media networks. And after you get done sharing the video, of course, because we are a cultural discussion page, go ahead and comment. I would greatly appreciate it. So let's get into uh, our series and today's topic. It is estimated that 64 to 75,000 black women are missing in the United States. However, coverage of these missing women by the media is low to non-existent in comparison to white female counterparts. A lot of coverage have come from black blogs, podcasts, and YouTube channels like myself. And I am grateful to contribute in shedding light on the stories of our missing black women. Oftentimes when we hear of tragedies, we begin with the structure of the family. We have been conditioned to believe that at the base, the family is indeed the beginning and with tragedy, the end. But what if our perspective is limited? What if we haven't taken the time to truly identify how tragedies are shaped by broken societal structure? So this is the tragic story of Relisha Rudd. Relisha Rudd was the oldest of three kids to her mother, Shamika Young. Young and her three kids had been temporarily staying at a DC general shelter in 2014 when Rudd went missing. They had relocated to that part of DC just a year earlier. Now DC general was the largest family shelter in DC housing about 1000 people. A lot of people have said that that place was very overpopulated and had began to ask for its closing in 2014 when Young and her family arrived. Now, during Young's stay at that shelter, she had befriended the shelter's janitor, a man by the name of Khalil Tatum. Now keep Tatum's name in mind as we go further into this investigation. Tatum was employed at the shelter as a part of an ex-felon employment program. Um, at the time, Tatum was considered quite the charmer at the shelter, very friendly with the other women. And he took a particular interest with little kids. Uh, specifically little girls. Now, in particular, he seemed to get really cozy with Young and her three kids, often bringing toys and food into the shelter for them. Uh, he took a particular interest in Relisha. Uh, Young stated he had brought her a tablet, he took her to Disney on ice, and provided transportation on many occasions and even ended up being called Relisha's godfather at some point during their relationship. Now, in some reports that Shamika Young gave, uh, she is on record saying that she thought that Tatum was a good guy because the residents at the shelter adored him. 
he uh, would often be seen extending himself to the residents or over extending himself to the residents. Although some perceived his overextending as being very, very flirtatious, others saw him as just a kind man. So when Tatum asked Young if it was okay to take the girl overnight to visit his grandmother, Young did not have any uh, problem with it because she had let Relisha spend the night with Tatum before. And because Relisha herself hated the shelter, often calling it the trap house. So in Shamika's eyes, it was normal for Relisha to stay with Tatum overnight. It, this wasn't the first time or the second time that this had occurred. It had often occurred quite a bit because Relisha did not like living in the shelter, especially because it was overpopulated as I stated before. So Shamika Young had no problems with this uh, stay overnight with Tatum. But there was a problem because Relisha stopped attending school, which prompted school official to inquire about her whereabouts on March 13th. Relisha was already seen as a high risk child by school officials after reports were made by Child and Family Services a long time ago. Now, school officials were told Relisha was sick and under care of a Dr. Tatum. They were even provided a note by Shamika Young stating that she was underneath care of a Dr. Tatum as well. Now, after several days of no shows of Relisha, school officials asked for a meeting with this Dr. Tatum to discuss Relisha's condition. But Dr. Tatum failed to attend prompting school officials to contact the Metropolitan Police Department of DC. The DC police did in fact open an investigation and they found that there was no Dr. Tatum. However, they did find out that the only Tatum linked to Relisha and her family worked at the general shelter and his full name was Khalil Tatum. Now, police found out that Relisha had been missing since about mid to late February, but she was not reported missing until March 19th of 2014. That same day, several members in Relisha's family are questioned by the police at the shelter. Um, now those people are uh, Shamika Young, her stepfather Antonio, her aunt Ashley, and her maternal grandmother Melissa Young. And here's where the story kind of gets confusing. And to this day, even now, um, we don't have the real answers as to how this child ended up with Tatum. Now, Shamika says that she left Relisha in the care of her grandmother, Melissa. And her grandmother, Melissa, says that she did not let Tatum have Relisha, that Relisha was given to Tatum by Shamika Young herself. Meanwhile, police do find some leads. We do see that Relisha and Khalil Tatum are seen on March 1st, 2014 at a day's end. Now, this is the last time you will see footage of Relisha with Tatum alive. Now, on the next day, uh, Tatum is also seen purchasing trash bags, a shovel and lime. Now he and his wife, whom I'm unsure if Shamika was aware of this wife or not, uh, they're also seen checking into 
a red roof hotel in Maryland. Now, after Relisha's family is questioned by the police, March 20th, the DC police issue an Amber Alert for the disappearance of Relisha and they asked the public for more information and for help finding little Relisha Rudd. Now, while the cops are searching for the whereabouts of Tatum and Relisha Rudd, his wife, Andrea Tatum, is found dead, shot in the head at the Red Roof Inn that they checked in the day before. Now, after Andrea's death, the search for Relisha Rudd intensifies. Uh, police obtain an arrest warrant for Tatum in connection to his wife's murder. But on March 31st, 2014, Khalil Tatum is found dead by a self-inflicted wound to the head um with the same gun that killed his wife andrea however the little eight-year-old girl relisha rudd was never found she is still missing to this day seven years later She's still gone. Now, speculations about who to blame has been pointed at all directions from the DC General Shelter, which we will talk about, to the Department of Child and Family Services and to Relish's family. So where does blame lie, right? Who's at fault for this tragedy um i think the easiest and most convenient answer is the family but what about the societal structure behind this family that resulted in this uh how do we take a look at that when Lyndon B. Johnson introduced the War on Poverty in 1964, no one knew or understood the impact it would have on the black family, specifically the black mother. Now, not only did she have to cut ties with her black male counterpart, she also had to allow the system into aspects of her personal life in an exchange for goods, shelters, and compensation. The system required social visits, trips to the aid office in which the black woman sat through intimate questions about her personal life, her parenting style, and her employment history. Not participating in these conversations resulted in fear of losing financial aid. And so reluctantly, um, black women obliged. So let's fast forward to some years later, right? Uh, this was no different for Relisha's mom who had been scrutinized for not coming forward with Relisha's whereabouts, right? So according to reports, Shamika Young, Relisha's mom, knew too well that reporting her child missing meant that her other children, including Relisha, if she was found, would be taken away. And she was not willing to lose any of them. You see, um, Shamika knew what that felt like herself being taken away from her mother, Melissa, as a child due to an altercation with the neighbor and then also unstable housing situations as well. So we see right there, there is repeated behavior. Melissa too uh, dealt with an unstable environment. Her mother too had issues with unstable housing 
and mental health, which forced Melissa to act as an adult. Now, she too hid the conditions of her family in order to keep her family together as well. Now, here's the irony. Simultaneously, the system we rely on to stabilize our family financially is also the system that we fear if we cannot stabilize our family. Now see, um, I believe that this family deals with what African American descendants of slaves have dealt with since the beginning, and that is the effects of slavery, Jim Crow, redlining, um, that resulted in generational poverty. And instead of giving us what we were owed, we were given social programs that intruded the black family structure, uh, resulting in single parent family homes and mothers who depended on a system while also hating the intrusion of said system. Poverty um, introduced Shamika into a life of secrets and a cycle that she knew all too well. She had no strangers because she often lived amongst them. Even her sister Ashley reports she spent time in that same shelter that Relisha was taken from. Uh, so it's no surprise that she meets and trusts Tatum. Now, how could she not trust this stranger? She was sent away from her own mothers into the arms of strangers. And while we're on the subject of Tatum, what about Tatum, right? I am one to applaud the attempt of this shelter to employ ex-offenders because if our conversation is going to be prison reform, men like Tatum will need to be fully acclimated into society in some way. However, I do have issue with Tatum not being reported for fraternizing with residents. Um, now it's stated at the shelter that fraternizing and having an employee resident relationship is forbid. Um, but unfortunately Tatum himself was not reported for uh, this behavior. Now it's also stated that a lot of people may have knew of the relationship between Tatum and Young, but uh, they did not report this to anyone. Also, uh, the shelter is supposed to report the number of residents at night. Now, it also has been stated that um, Shamika's kids were reported at least 50% of the time, which is also supposed to come up in a daily report in which they address that issue if it becomes a problem. Now, if it becomes a problem, it was supposed to actually be uh, further investigated so that the shelter could look into why the children were not sleeping in the shelter with Shamika Young, but that was not done at all. And unfortunately, because of that, uh, Tatum and Young's relationship slipped through the crack of the shelter, which was already overly populated. So I know that, you know, you're probably still trying to figure out, you know, what Shamika says that she did not give permission to Melissa, who Shamika's mother, uh, to let Relisha Rudd go with Tatum. Someone's story is loopy and it does not make sense. But, you know, once again, it um, speaks to the fear of losing that these women both had to endure throughout their lives. Uh, however, Shamika nor her family, who's, you know, pretty much disintegrated. Um, and you can find out more information about what has happened through the seven years and the family's arguments and different things like that. You can find that online. Uh, all of them 
are on agreement on one thing. They have not given hope on finding her. Um, this beautiful little girl often called bright and bubbly by school officials and loving by her own family still deserves some closure, even if that's um, a burial, right? Uh, even though we are hoping for the best, even if it's a burial, they are hoping for some closure. If you or anyone has any information about Relisha's whereabouts, I will leave the number and information below. So tonight, I just wanted to ask you, have you heard about the story of Relisha Rudd? Um, and what do you feel about it? Um, how do you feel about it? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, um, this is going to continue for the whole month of March. Every Wednesday, I will be giving you another Where My Girls At story in honor of Women's History Month. And so hopefully you'll look forward to that. Um, you'll share these types of videos and you'll add to the discussion about um, these missing black girls and the lack of coverage uh, by the media. So uh, leave your comments below, share this video, like this video. I will see you very soon because we all know Coming to America is coming out this Friday and I'm most definitely going to review it. So be on the lookout for that. But please enjoy the rest of your night. Be safe and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.